Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, also known as Lord of the Legendary. I switched the deck up just a little bit. Decided to try the Paladin out with it. And I swapped out the Faceless Manipulators for Alarma Bots. Now you might say, well, Total Biscuit, that ruins the deck, and now it's not 30 Legendaries. But it is! Because an Alarma Bot can only summon a Legendary. Or possibly another Alarma Bot. But that would be a little bit weird. Anyway. Let us see. We're currently rank 19. Can we go any higher than that? A good question, you might ask. Yes. We'll find out. The other nice addition to the Paladin deck is instead of getting Alakir, you get Tyrion Forgering, who is way better. And he also synergizes quite nicely with Captain Greenskin, because he gives you a weapon, which you can then buff with Captain Greenskin. So that's quite nice. You can also do the little Tink Master trick, which we actually have the opportunity to do here. Which is to bring out one of the little Paladin tokens, and then use Tink Master Overspark to turn it into a Devil Saw. At least that's the hope. So I'm going to toss Gelbin, toss Malagos here, keep hold of Murkai. Uh, he's a pretty nice thing. We don't really have many four-cost cards, so it's actually not a bad little selection. Green skin at this stage is not that useful, but we have something we can play in the mid-game before getting the big stompy stuff, so we'll see how it goes. The coin doesn't really help too much here, because one way or the other, you can't get Tinkmaster out with the combination until turn three, because you can't get anything on the board. The only way you could do it is with a Wisp which I'm not going to do, <laughs> for obvious reasons. So, let him go with that. Now, of course, it's nice to go second with this deck because you can go turn to a Llama Bot. Now, he's, you know, this would be ideal. If I had an Llama Bot right now, it'd be great, because this guy's done nothing two turns. Nothing aggressive, anyway. He has no board control whatsoever, so that would be great. But as it stands, we're going to go with that. And we'll keep the coin. That'll get us, like, a turn five Hogger or something along those lines, which might work out pretty well. So, there's definite opportunities there. So, this token right here, the Silver Hand Recruit, is going to get turned into either a 1-1 one -one Scribble, which is exactly the same, or it's going to get turned into a Devil Saw, which is a 5-5, which is pretty damn good. He's armoring up again. He actually has really has nothing to play in three turns. That's quite surprising. All right, well, in this case, we're actually going to make an exception to what we're going to do because he's given me the opportunity to play an Alarma Bot. Now, there is the possibility that on turn 4, he'll bring out a Corcoran Elite, and that will allow him to kill my Alarma Bot. But at this point, since there's nothing on the board, I think it's a good risk to take, because that could get me something like Gelban or Anixia. It's still not ideal, frankly, because I would like to, I would not like to get Anixia, but even then, Anixia without the Whelps is still an 8-8 on turn 4, which is kind of ridiculous and hard to deal with. So we'll see what his response to that is. I expect something like a Corcoran Elite to come out, or may uh, maybe even that Charging Wolf. That's a possibility. We'll see. He's armoring up again. What the hell is he doing? Nothing, apparently. All right, and I get Captain Greenskin. Okay. Not the best thing ever, but it's not bad. It's not bad. I'll take Captain Greenskin. So I might even hold on to Tink Master at this stage. I could go Coin into a turn 5, but I don't actually have any turn 5s. So I'm... Th we could hold on to Tink Master. Might be a good idea. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to play Old Murkai instead. Could play Millhouse Mana Storm, but I'd rather wait. Okay, so we could go for Coin Gelbin or Coin Hogger, depending on what comes out. He's got to play something now. He's been doing absolutely nothing up to this point, so... Captain Greenskin it wasn't the best grab, but it definitely wasn't the worst. That could have been Tink Master. If that was Tink Master, that would have actually been a terrible Alarma Bot. But as the risk, those are the breaks, folks. Alarma Bot is a risky card. I'm just kind of happy I got to do something with it. Oh, getting a 5-4 out in turn 4 is pretty good. Ooh, okay. So that's going to be one dead 5-4. Okay, well, Hogger is going to be the option here then, definitely. Because we want to protect our other cards. So that's going to be it. Yeah, we don't... It's not giving me a Harrison Jones, so we're going to have to go with Hogger, which is fine. Well, Hogger's a good card to have out here because the only thing he's got in his hand is a weapon. So a taunt is really useful, and we don't really have too many taunts in this deck. There's only Hogger and Tyrion Forgering, which we can't play yet anyway. So there you go. We're in a pretty good spot. We have massive board control. He could pull out a Brawl or something like that. That would work pretty well for him. But aside from that, 
Oh, Argent Commander. Okay, so Hogger's gonna die. That sucks. We can get rid of the Argent Commander fairly handily. It's kind of annoying that he was able to pull that off, but it happens. It's no big deal. We can kill it off with Murkai. Easy peasy. The follow-up is going to be Gelbin Mechatork, I think. It's a safe time to play him, I think, because we're not really sitting on too many valuable things, and so if we get a Poultryizer, then it's okay. Also, we get a Homing Chicken, we can actually make it connect. And we actually got an Emboldener 3000, which is okay. It's actually pretty good for what we've got. So the only thing that's going to do is buff something on my side, so I get a 7-7 seven, seven out of that. So that's pretty good. Gelbin's a really risky card. He's a very fun card, but he's one of the worst legendaries because you can't rely on what he pulls out. And the things that he does pull out can sometimes actually cause you problems. Like the Poultryizer can turn not only itself into a, into a chicken. That's kind of annoying, but there we go. It can turn itself into a chicken, and it can also turn Gelbin into a chicken, which is really terrible. That's an execute, isn't it? Thought so. All right, well, so far we're still winning, so it really doesn't actually matter that much. He's burning a lot of cards to get rid of my stuff, and I got to turn 7 without taking any damage, and he did. So that's where this deck really gets going. If you can't rush it down early, then you're in horrible, horrible places. You can armor up all you please. It will not make a difference. Turn 7 play. We actually don't have that many options, but that's okay. We just pulled the beast, which is going to work just fine for my purposes. Big, scary creature. He just used a lot of removal, so the beast is clearly the way to go. There we go. The other possibility would have been playing Millhouse Mana Storm, and then maybe the Tinkmaster Overspark to turn the Emboldener into a Devil Saw, potentially, but I think this is the best thing to have right now. It buffs itself! <laughs> yeah, that can happen. Those inventions are really weird. The Emboldener is one of them. There's then a Repair Bot, which is, again, very random. It can actually heal the enemy, so it would, if I'd got that, it would have been really bad, because it would have started healing him instead of my stuff, which would suck, because he's the only damaged thing on the board. There's the Homing Chicken, which is really good, but it's very hard to keep alive, especially against a mage, because it's got, like, one health, so it can easily be sniped off. What's he gonna do? What could he possibly have? I mean, he could slam it and then execute it, I guess. That's a possibility. It's not that many options you've got in this situation as a warrior to deal with the beast. The beast is quite nasty against a warrior, because a lot of their removal is weapon-based, and that means face-checking the beast at nine damage, which is not good. Sunwalker, all right. Could definitely use my Black Knight here. That was a bit of a poor play there with the commanding shout because it's only that turn. All right, well, what we'll do here is we'll just Leroy it. So we can use the uh, Emboldener to knock the shield off it and then we can Leroy him. Uh, do I have any, I don't have any better option. The only other thing I can do is Tink Master, which would still work. But it could give him a 5-5 five, five Devil Saw, which means that I have to then kill that with the Beast, which takes and that's a lot of health off the Beast. So that's a little bit risky. I think Leroy is maybe the best plan here. We could also follow that up with Millhouse Mana Storm and Law Walker Chill, if we want. Let's do that. Okay, Leroy is out, Law Walker Cho is out, and Millhouse Mana Storm, which is a nice little combo. So I get what hopefully whatever he casts here, so. There we go, we get rid of that, and then we sacrifice Millhouse to kill that off, and then we hit him for 9 damage. There we go. That works pretty well. Hard to argue with that one. Leaves him with a couple of whelps on the board, but it's going to be pretty difficult for him to get rid of the beast, and we also have an Anixia play next turn if we want to, or a Nozdormu, whichever. Oh, big game hunter. It quite literally is the beast in his sights. Alright, that's a little irritating. He had the perfect card for that situation. Never mind. That's okay. I've got plenty more big, scary beasties, and I did at least get a hit off with them, so... If he manages to clear the board, I'll definitely go Anixia, because it's the most efficient way to use him. If he doesn't, then Nozdormu, I think. I don't really want to waste Tink Master in this situation. I'm going to hold on to him, just in case he plays anything big and scary. Execute comes out. All right, so that's Millhouse dead. Gives me an Execute, though, which is quite helpful. I could definitely make use of that. Doesn't get rid of my Law Walker Cho either, so... This is actually good for me. I'm tempted to go Anixia. It means that I'll get... I'll only get five whelps. Instead of six. But it's still pretty good. He's got a lot of stuff on the board. What would be really nice here is to get hold of a... Baron Geddon, but... It's not helping right now. Hmm. 
Okay, well, he's got some stuff on the board, which is fine. Harrison Jones, nice to have. I think we're going to start putting pressure on him. Let's play Nosdomu. Nosdomu is something that freaks a lot of people out because they're not used to it. They don't, they start to panic and they do really weird stuff. For those who don't know what Nosdomu is, you've got 15 seconds to take your turn only, which often means that players do some really weird stuff that doesn't really make a huge amount of sense because they are panicking. Like this guy hasn't actually used any of his mana this turn. And he's run out of time before he can actually attack me, which is pretty great. So that worked out well. I think we're going to go Ken Bloodhoof here. There we go. And uh, we are not going to play the alarm box. Because that's actually a terrible plan. There we go. Gets rid of his taunt. So he can kill my Nozdomu off. Absolutely. But it still leaves me with a Ken Bloodhoof on the board. So I'm okay with that. I didn't want to use the llama bot because Anixia's battle cry and Tink Master's battle cry are very important. And you don't want to really waste that. Also Harrison Jones. So the Alarma bot would be a bad play in that situation. Alright, so we used this 5-2 to kill off my Nulls Domo, which is fine. Uh, I have plenty more scary cards where that came from, so I'm not really all that worried. He's able to get the rest of his turn back, as you can see here. If he wants to run that into there, that's fine. That's a great trade for me, by all means. I don't lose my guy, and I can always bring him back, so... I'm alright with that. Alright, this is gonna... I was gonna say, he's, I think he's used all his executes. He can't have any more of them. Maybe he has a Whirlwind or something. Or Cruel Taskmaster to kill it off. Hey, I have not seen a Magma Rager in a while. Is he going to give that charge? Ah! Well, that's kind of cool. I haven't seen that happen before. Alright. Alright then. That's fine. It's actually kind of an annoying card for me to deal with right now. He did some damage with it, so I'll give him all due credit for that. Alright. I think the best thing I can do right now would be Elite Tauren Chieftain and use Ken to kill the Magma Rager get my Bane Blood Hoof back. There we go. There we play Elite Tauren Chieftain, which works pretty well. Still holding on to Anixia. I don't want to play her in a suboptimal situation if I can avoid it. I also just pulled Iron Murloc, which is probably a pretty good play right now. So I'm going to do that. It's better than anything else I currently have in my hand. So Iron Murloc for three Murlocs. Okay, cool. So that gives me a nice little board. I'm still ahead, although not, not hugely. He's managed to catch up quite nicely. I do need to get some of my really scary turn 9 stuff out. I haven't had a Ysera, I haven't had a Ragnaros, obviously my Deathwing's not there. Any of the big dragons are just scary in that situation because they've got really high health and they're difficult to deal with, especially once you've run out of executes. Uses rogues to it, okay. So that's going to draw him a card, which is quite nice. He's hoping for a whirlwind right here. He evidently doesn't have it because he's going to sack his 2-2 into my 5-1. It's just a fine trade, you know, he's trading up, there's nothing wrong with that. I still have damage on the board though. So not really a big deal. Lord of the Arena. All right. I'd have to sack two creatures to get rid of that. Unless I got Black Knight. Ah, Ysera. Great. Okay. Not an issue. Ysera is getting played, obviously. And Bane has traded really well. So he's going to have a noble death over here. And I've got my Ysera on the board. So now things are really heating up for him. Guess we a dream. Okay. I would definitely like one of those 7-5 drakes. Or was it 7-6 Drake, actually? Pretty good Drake, whatever's the case. But, yeah, it works. Still holding on to Anixia for a board wipe potential. It's not really much you can do to board wipe. A brawl, maybe. But even then, there's a 1-3 in three chance my Ysera stays alive, so... Yeah, that's... You know if they're playing Brewmasters first, then they definitely don't have any moves left. So, yeah, I pretty much burned through them quite nicely, I think. Uh, Warson Commander going for the charge. Is he just going to try and do damage to me? I guess so. He's not going to run it right to Ysera. That would be silly. Yeah, there you go. That's to be expected. That's fine. I mean, that actually puts me below his health. So, that's absolutely fine play. But, yeah, I just keep getting options and he doesn't. That's the main thing. All right, so let's eliminate some of these creatures. What's the best thing we can do? We can just damage and execute, I think. Could do. I'm going to run the Ysera into the Brewmaster. I want to do that, and then I'm going to execute it. There we go. It's a nice, nice, efficient way of getting rid of it, I feel. And that leaves me with a Tink Master play, actually. We're going to go for 5-5. Five, five. Devil Sword should have attacked first. Ah, I got a Squirrel. Whatever. It happens. And I was thinking about a Llama Bot, but it doesn't seem like a really good idea right now. So we're just going to kill that. There we go. Again, the battle cries on these two are too good to potentially waste with an Llama Bot, so I'll do that. Get another Dream card, 
Uh, he's only got a couple of cards left, so he's really running out of options. I have full board control. I like how they actually bothered to make a golden squirrel. That's impressive. The little leaves animation. That was great. All right, what you got? You got a brawl? Brawl would be great here for you. If you don't have a brawl, then you probably don't have much. Oh, he's got nothing. Okay. All right, good to know. So I'm going to go Illidan and then Laughing Sister. There we go. And then just punch him a few times. There we go. Send the squirrel in, because why not? Excellent. Sweet. And I get myself another dream card. Nightmare. Right. He's... It took a while, but I think he's dead. Like, looking at this board, I don't really see too many ways out of this. Brawl would be the best thing he's got, assuming he has one. And if he doesn't, well, that's it. He's not getting out of that. No way in a million years. What's he got? What's that? He's a brave soldier, I'll give him that. Silence, maybe? Some kind of silence creature? Shield slam. Well, that did a grand total of two damage, which is not particularly scary, I've got to say. Mortal strike. Okay, well, I got rid of Illidan. What about the other legendaries? <laughs> I suppose Illidan's quite intimidating, so it's to be expected. But yeah, he's dead next turn because I have Nightmare, so... That is going to be him done. Alex Straza pulled, not really too helpful. So let's see, do we have lethal? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yes, we do with nightmare. So this is the nightmare squirrel. This is what is going to spell his demise. There we go. And the nightmare squirrel. GG. He shall dream of that at some point. He certainly will. Sweet. That went fairly well. Can't really argue with that. And as you can see, I managed to get some dailies that actually worked. Most of the dailies have to drop because I'm only playing Paladin right now. But this works. Admittedly, the spell daily is going to take me a little while to get, considering I don't actually have any spells in the deck. But coin counts and Elite Tauren Chieftain cards count. Oh, mage decks. Okay, these usually just wreck me in every way. I have a very poor win rate against mages. Okay, we... Alarm about turn three is generally pretty bad. We do have King Muckler, though. That's okay. Yeah, I, I don't... I can't remember the last time I actually went second against a mage, which is even worse. Because I literally have no options for three turns. So... That's enough for a mage to get things rolling, especially if he's got one of those nasty little combos. Something like, say, Mana Worm. Oh, coins coming out. Blood Mage Thalmos. All right. That can be pretty annoying early game. It's some of the earliest spell power you can get out. And it's a card draw in there as well. Also, killing it's going to be nigh impossible because of that bloody fire blast. I think we'll... It's going to be... Well, I mean, we can go King Mokla, but... The nice thing about this for him is that he can use things like Arcane Missiles for four. Frost Bolts will hit for four. Which means he can efficiently remove pretty much anything. Arcane Explosion works pretty well, too. Okay. We can risk a Llama Bot, because we actually have a bunch of really good stuff that would work well. Or we can go King Muckler. If he only has a 1-1 on the board, I believe King Muckler is the best play. I don't trust this mage not to have a way of getting rid of this Llama Bot. There's probably about 5,000 cards he's got that can do it. King Muckler, on the other hand, is a little bit more difficult to deal with. Some of the weaker cards, you know, if you have to use, say, his Blood Mage Thalnos and an Arcane Missiles, that all have to connect with King Muckler, which is statistically unlikely, so that's a possibility. If he's got a Frostbolt, then he could just do that. And uh, he probably does. Yeah, there you go. And then he could run his Blood Mage Thalnos in. Not really sure what that was all about. Or maybe he's just not going to. Yeah, he's probably just going to wait till next turn. Smart. Yeah, just don't even sacrifice your Blood Mage Thalnos. He didn't attack me with it. Okay. Well, thanks for that, I guess, but... Alright, this is a cool situation. I know, it sounds weird, but... Makes it a little bit more difficult for him to choose what to attack. He may, of course, have another removal card, in which case that doesn't make any difference, but what I'm saying to him right now is which one do you want to kill? Oh, actually, never mind. He has a second set of bananas. I didn't think of that, so that's actually a complete waste. Alright, he is firmly ahead. Firmly ahead. 
But bear in mind this deck. Oh, come on. No turn fives, really? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this is terrible. But, yeah, just bear in mind this deck is supposed to survive until these later turn stages. I got really unlucky, though. I've had no plays. So that kind of sucks. And now he's going to have plays. So that's probably a mirror entity. So I want to be really careful with what I play here. It's actually terrible. <laughs> uh... If that's a mirror entity, I'm in serious trouble. Okay. Best play here. There isn't one. <laughs> I don't want to give him an Illidan, because if that is a mirror entity, he can actually use it. Hogger is okay. I don't really want to play the beast because there's too risk there's too many risks of him being able to kill it off easily and getting the 3-3 for free from it. Cam Blood Hoof again is fine, but again, if that's a mirror entity. And I don't believe that triggers off reinforce either. I'm just going to have to eat it. I can't not play anything. So... Uh, uh, it's... Uh, Hogger. It wasn't Mirror Entity. Never mind then. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't have played Hogger. <laughs> If that wasn't a mirror entity, Hogger was a bad play, because removing Hogger is very easy. Ken Bloodhoof would have been a better play in that situation, because something like a Fireball doesn't actually kill him because of his death rattle. The Beast would have been a bad play, because Fireball plus Fire Blast kills it. Illidan would have been a bad play, again, because this, this is the kind of time we'll have a Fireball, so... Really, Ken was the best play, assuming that I knew that wasn't a mirror entity, but I didn't. So Ken was actually a bad play, if you get what I mean. But I may get lucky. He might not have enough to deal with what I have, so... This Blood Mage Thalmos has proven to be a gigantic pain in the ass. Oh, never mind. Of course he has something. He has a mage. As I said, this deck loses to mages all the time. It's really quite irritating. Yep, so that's all that wiped off the board. He actually hasn't used any creatures yet. He's just got this bloody thing. Okay. Play here is going to be Baron Geddon, because that's going to wipe that off the board easy. And it's not one of my more valuable cards. And it also means that if he can't get rid of it, he can't really play anything on low health. So, there we go. Get rid of that. Gets rid of his Blood Mage Thalmos. At least that's off the board. So, we'll see what he comes up with. If he doesn't play anything, then it'll be Ragnaros. If he plays anything strong, it'll be Ragnaros. If he plays a Taunt, it'll be Black Knight, maybe. It depends how strong his Taunt is. If it's not a strong Taunt, I'll hold the Black Knight and play Ragnaros anyway. Because that, yeah, that would just be a good option. It's also a tough creature, so it can eat a lot of those Baron Geddon shots. But Baron Geddon's probably getting fireballed anyway, so I don't see why it would matter. We'll see what he's got. Water Elemental. Alright. So Ragnaros is a really good card to play here. Arcane Intellect. So he's got a good hand, but he has no cards, so... I am going to make the assumption that that's probably a Vaporize... So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to run Baron Geddon into it. I'm going to run Baron Geddon into the Water Elemental, and then I'm going to play Ragnaros, and he's going to take 8 damage. That's the best way to go, I think. It's just whatever doesn't involve me touching the mage right now with a valuable creature. So there's the fire that goes off, and then he eats 8 damage from Ragnaros. Cool. Other options there would have been Grawl, but again, if that's a Vaporize, you don't really want to play Grawl. I'll need to get rid of it at some point. Actually, I don't really need to get rid of it at all. That would be the hilarious thing. If I can keep Ragnaros on the field... Ah, Iron Bical comes out. Alright, that is almost assuredly a Vaporize. I can pretty much tell you for a fact that's a Vaporize now. That's a tell. It's one of the more common cards anyway. He wants me to run my Ragnaros into it. Obviously, silencing the rag is a good call regardless, but then that turns it into an 8-6 that can fight. So, oh, Jesus. That could be anything. Acidic Swampoos. Okay. This is a tough call. Because that's probably Mirror Entity. I think Anixia might be a good play here, because... And Anixia versus no Anixia is pretty good. And then I can just use Ragnaros to kill Anixia immediately. And then that leaves me with an Anixia on the field. And a bunch of little creatures that I can run into as Vaporize. So, Anixia it goes. How is that not a Mirror Entity? That was... I... Huh. Huh. What the hell is that then? If that's a counter spell, he's gonna be... <laughs> kicking himself. 
Wow, I can't believe that wasn't a mirror entity. That's shocking. That's pretty fantastic. But one of them's got to be a vaporize, so that's cool. He may have some AoE, in which case that's going to be irrelevant. Weakening it down to six, so I expect a fireball to come out to deal with the Nixia. But that at least means I can run a whelp into vaporize and get rid of that. It may be something like an ice barrier, maybe ice block. I don't, I don't know. But spellbender, spellbender seems like a weird choice. I don't know. There are six mage secrets, so it can sometimes be a little bit hard to determine what it is. You should usually assume mirror entity and vaporize, because they're the most common, but in this case, apparently not. What we do. Sweet abomination. Actually, that's terrible. And polymorphs and Nixia, I hate you. Yeah, the reason that is bad, ladies and gentlemen, is because I could Black Knight him, but if I do Black Knight him, then all my whelps explode. Which puts me right back in the same situation of not wanting to run into that sodding vaporize. So I, the card that he just played is ideal for his current predicament. Black Best way to get rid of him? Well, we could, the only thing we can do is run sheep into him. I've got to run at least something into him. I'm going to lose this stuff regardless, so I'm not going to waste my Black Knight here. Because, because of that death rattle. I've got no silence. So, yeah, we're just going to go for it. That at least means... No, actually it doesn't. I, I keep forgetting. I was like, oh yeah, I can check if it's... Oh no, I can't check if it's a Vaporize. Never mind. I'm almost convinced that it is. It's gotta be a Vaporize. Alright, what are we gonna do from this position? Well, he's gonna die next turn anyway, so I might as well. It might not be a Vaporize. Is it a Vaporize? Ice Barrier? It's not a Vaporize. That is incredible and really surprising. Alright, okay then. In that case, we go... He's used most of his hard removal. We go Grull. There we go. And it's not a Vaporize. How was that not a Vaporize? Why would you not use a Vaporize in this situation? Well, my rag's gonna die, but... I've been mind gaming myself for the last three turns. It's like, oh, he's gotta have played that. No, apparently he doesn't. <laughs> at all. Okay, that's Ragnaros dying to a Fire Blast in a rather heady piece of irony. It's a Frost Control deck. Yeah. Ah, Doomsayer. That's a pretty cool card to play. It's a really, really nice card for him. And I actually have no way of getting rid of it. So that's brilliant play by him. And very, very surprising. I was not expecting to see a Doomsayer. Okay, well, obviously I don't want to play anything. because, And I'm going to lose Grawl, which kind of sucks. This deck has the most removal of anything I've ever seen. I'm trying to think of anything else. The only thing I could do is Elite Tor and Chieftain, but even that won't give me what I need to kill it. So there is literally no point in me doing anything. At all! Except, you know, attacking him for one. So bye bye, Grawl. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grawl. Doomsayer was the best value Doomsayer in history. This guy's got some interesting cards. I like him. Mountain Giants, all right. You're gonna bring out something scary? Is that how it's gonna be? And try and scare me? All right. I got scarier stuff than that. I'm not gonna play in those Dome because you can kill it immediately. Best play here is actually Sylvanas. Because if he tries to kill, I don't know, he might have Pyroblasts in his hand. He might be looking, Can he, he can't do a one turn kill though. Beast doesn't make any sense because it just trades and then gives him a 3-3. Wouldn't want to do that. We could go Illidan Llama Bot, but I think Sylvanas is the best play here. There we go. And we'll put Elite Torrent Chief now as well. Just for the hell of it. I just realized that was dumb and I just fed him a 5-5. <laughs> Well, he's in a position where he could win because he's a mage. So if he pulls two pyroblasts and then just hits me in the face, I'm in real trouble. Oh, this control is just getting on my nerves now. That was his second cone of coal, wasn't it? And he's used an ice lance. I don't think he's used a blizzard yet. Now he's going to use rogues to do it from behind, which is going to take me down to 16. Yeah, I am actually going to lose this by the looks of it. That was a big hit. I hate mages so much. Two classes I hate right now. Priests and mages. Absolutely infuriating. Okay. I'm probably dead now because if he pulls a pyro, then that's it. I've got no other options. I could play power of the horde and hope for a taunt. 
and hope that he doesn't have any removal in his hand, because he has burned a lot of it. It's probably going to be it. We'll play Illidan first, and then power the Horde. There's nothing else to play, really. Nothing else that'll actually keep me alive, so... So the hope is we pull a Taunt creature with power of the Horde. GG. <laughs> Counterspell. Bloody Counterspell. Oh, dear. That was actually really depressing, and now I hate mages even more than I used to. Oh, God. So much just infuriating control and removal nonsense. Oh. Oh, well. Never mind. Should have seen that counter spell coming. It never crossed my mind. I was just saying, oh, yeah, power of the hordes a spell. Damn. Never got to use Black Knight because he really didn't put up a taunt that made much sense to use it on. Didn't get to play Tyrion. Ugh, that was depressing. Aye, right, bonus spider. It's a priest, the other class I hate. Oh, and I get to go first as well. I'm always against the classes I hate, I get to go first, which is even better. And we get a terrible opening hand. And a not so great. Second hand. So, priests are really bad to play against with this deck because Alarma bots are absolutely useless thanks to Shadow Word Pain. So, that's wonderful. They usually open up with some really infuriating turn one Norshire Cleric stuff, which I can't do anything about. So, that's nice. Yeah. Overall, priests are just annoying to play. Oh well. We'll see what he comes up with. I'm destroying everything on the board here in frustration at my last loss. Oh look! It's the turn one Northshire Cleric nonsense that I said would happen. Yep, so this is really irritating because you cannot play one of these. If you do, you give them a card. So I can't do anything, which is lovely. <laughs> uh. And he has the coin, which gives him some other nonsense, which is going to completely shut down my ability to play an Alarma bot. Of course it is. Of course it is. We can take the risk on the Alarma bot. It's really the only thing we can do. So the risk is, it, this is 50-50, so the Demolisher might not hit the Alarma bot, in which case we're okay. And it hits the Alarma bot, so screw it, we're not okay. <laughs> great. <laughs> Just great. Even the music disappeared for some reason. Where'd it go? I have no idea, but... Alright, we have turn four Murkai, which is absolutely useless. Yeah, I might as well just concede this pretty quickly, but Leroy Jenkins is probably the only thing I can do here. At least that gets rid of the Northshire Cleric, and it actually doesn't kill Leroy, but, well, it doesn't matter, he's going to die anyway. Other thing I was thinking of is the do- yeah, actually, killing the demo- no. Because what all he'll do is he'll use the two- the two little things, the whelps, to kill it. Murkai's useless. Yeah, it's going to be Leroy. So... Well, Leroy, that, there we go. And then he's got to use at least one of the whelps unless the Demolisher hits it, which he might. Ah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I am making Hearthstone video. <laughs> that's, one of my t that's one of our team, by the way, if you didn't recognize that. Where's the music gone? I'm depressed now. Okay, turn five. We got Sylvanas Windrunner. It's not a terrible card to play here, because we might get control of the Demolisher. Old Murkai is useless, so... Yeah, it also trades well with what he's got on the board, so... Well, it did, until he killed it with the freaking Demolisher. Ugh. Well, Gelbin Mechatork is our turn six play here. Things are not going well at all. I'm very surprised that he hasn't busted anything crazy out, but... I just realized she's a turn... She's a five attack. All right. Give me the Demolisher. Yes. Free Demolisher. Now it gets Shadow Word Pained. Priests. Priests. I hate priests so much. At least it traded well. You know, he had to use a lot of his cards. So that's actually pretty good. Okay. He actually has no attack potential whatsoever. Galban is viable here. So is Ken. 
But Gelbin's better because it kills the light well, whereas Ken does not. So, Gelbin Mechatork. Bit of a risk. Oh, homing chicken is useless in this situation. They need to buff that. Like, that needs to be a 0 2, because frankly, that is fucking useless. Or at least make it a 1 1 so it trades. Like, it's a horrible, horrible invention card. It's the worst. Absolutely the worst. Like, there's barely any situation where you could safely play that and have it work. So, yeah. It sucks. Uh-oh, scary stuff coming out. At least we can kill the light well. Alright, here's what not to play against a priest on turn 7. Millhouse Mana Storm. That is not a thing that you should be playing. Alright. What I'm a bit concerned about is leaving this Boulder Fist Ogre alive. We may trade two for one. I know it sounds terrible, but... The other possibility is that I just get keep, I keep getting smacked and he maybe has some annoying divine spirit in a fire combo that just murders me. So, yeah, we're gonna go with that. I know, it's terrible, I know. But it also means we can actually play Millhouse Mana Storm safely because we have no mind control targets on the board. There we go. So, that seems like the better play there. We've got a... I say he's got the same number of cards as me, but he doesn't have the same quality of cards, most likely, so... I'll be able to play things like Grawl and Ken and Ysera and Deathwing and all that scary stuff, so... We're okay right now, but we're not in a great spot. That light was pretty annoying. Thankfully, it's not doing anything yet, so... But it's irritating to have out regardless. So let's see if he has any cards in his four-card hand that he can actually use to take advantage of the Millhouse Mana Storm proc. If he doesn't, then we get away with it, which is cool. And it also means we can play something like Grawl next turn. Master Swordsmith. Alright, so he's just pulling out everything he's got on the board, which makes sense, absolutely. Alright, well that's fine. We're going to start knocking things out for him. We have an Alex Straza, which is great because we're going to take a lot of damage next turn. And we're going to play Grawl. There we go. And we are going to use Millhouse Mana Storm to kill off that 1-3. There we go. Now it's like, you've left him with damage potential. I know, but I have Alex Straza, so that's okay. And he doesn't have mind control for two more turns, so Grawl can wreak havoc in the meantime. So, is he going to run all of his creatures into Grawl? Well, looks like he's thinking about it. Oh, that's fine with me. I've got I've got scary creatures. You want to trade three for one with Grawl, then that's fine by me. I'm totally okay with that. Gurubashi Berserker, that's a little irritating. Ooh, in a fire. Ooh, that, that is a really nasty combo. We might have to Deathwing that. Yeah, I think that seems like the way to go here. We could play Ysera, but this is a pretty bad spot because of that. However, he is mostly out of cards, so that will help. Since I'm thinking about Deathwinging next turn, I don't necessarily want to play anything else. But I may have to go Alexstrasza next turn, so I don't think Deathwing's the option here. Let him do some damage to me. Let's get Ysera on the board. So at least we have some options, because then I'll be able to do something like maybe cast Dream on the Gurubashi and get rid of it next turn. So that would be okay. Nightmare. Okay. I can make things like that work. That's alright. He's also all, almost out of cards, so Deathwing is not a bad... Well, actually, Deathwing's a terrible idea against the Priest, because all, what he'd do is mind control it, and then i just lose. But, yeah. He hasn't got mind control just yet. We're just going to be a little bit careful about what we do here. Plus, he only- he- oh, he's about to use his last card, so he actually has no MC whatsoever. Alright. Okay, that's good to know. So, Deathwing is actually not a terrible play here. Basically, I do as much damage as possible with Nightmare, and then I Deathwing to wipe his board and hope that the one card he does have, or the two cards he does have, are not mind control. Which they probably aren't. Alright, cool. Yeah, he's got some really strong stuff on the board, so it's definitely time for the Deathwing action. We're going to use Nightmare on Millhouse Mana Storm. We're going to do as much damage as possible, and then we're going to Deathwing the board. There we go. So there's some damage, and there's the Deathwing to wipe everything he's got. Okay, so the only risk here... The only risk is if in these two cards he has a mind control. If he doesn't, he loses. If he does, I'm going to cry. Because I lose. That's a mind control. No. Oh, shut. Oh, there's that, I guess. Well, I mean, that's actually less terrible than him mind-controlling me. So, we're now actually back in a reset situation, which for... Alright. Tink Master Overspark combo coming in right here. Not exactly what I was hoping to pull, but... Here's a Devil Saw! Enjoy it! 
Alright. Cool, we have board control back. This is getting interesting. Interesting. Holy Nova. Kind of annoying. Healing himself up. What's his... What's going on the board here? Flesh eating ghoul. Okay, so that dies immediately. And I don't lose it, which is cool. Harrison Jones? Well, it's a priest. It's not going to have a weapon, so we're just throwing every legendary we can at him right now. How many legendaries do I have? I've got 15 cards left in my deck, so I have 15 more really scary things in my deck. So I'm okay with that. And he probably doesn't have that. That's his second Holy Nova. Okay, so that was good for him, but I now have Tyrion Forgering. Okay, incoming mind control top deck. Come on. I know you got it. You're a priest. Of course you've got it. Or possible shadow of death. Come on. Oh, he hasn't got a mind control. All right. Okay, cool. He's in serious trouble. I'm going to hold on to Captain Greenskin, actually, in this situation. Because uh, if I get my Ashbringer, I want my nice little buffed Ashbringer. There we go. Come on. Mind control Tyrion. You know you want to. You know you want to. Come on. Let's see the mind control. Does he not have it? Because that's amazing if he doesn't have it. In a fire, a Northshire cleric. <laughs> that is not going to save him, I'm afraid. It'll actually keep him alive for one more turn, but that is, that is not what he wanted here. No, not at all. Lovely, lovely. All right. Damage, damage. Well, he could still stay alive if he pulls a mind control for Tyrion Fordering. He doesn't have one. There's the GG, I think. That was a that was a close game. I enjoyed that a lot. That was a lot of fun. There you go. You can have a nose door move just for particle effects. There we go. That was fun. It was especially fun because that was a priest that died. I'm sorry. I'm very vindictive just the way of it. It's just how I am. All of the wonderful gold. Yes, yes. Alright, and the music's died. I don't know what the hell happened. Regardless, I think that's a good time to wrap up. This is my last video before Christmas, guys, so thank you very much for watching, and you guys have been amazing throughout the year. Thank you very much for your support. We'll bring you more Hearthstone after Christmas. Have a great one. I'll see you next time.